So, good morning everyone and once again welcome to the Law Faculty. My name is Claire Fenton Glynn and I'm one of the access officers here at the Faculty as well as a lecturer in law. I'm really glad to see so many people here interested in studying law and what I want to do today is go through quickly uh, with you. First of all, why it is a benefit to you to study law at university in general. Secondly, I want to talk about the law course in Cambridge and what it is that we do that is special and makes studying law at Cambridge so great. And finally, I want to go over uh, quickly our course, our teaching methods, to talk again, uh, as Richard mentioned, about our supervision system and what makes us so special. So first of all, I'll stay here. Why law? Why should you choose to study law as an academic subject at university? Some of you may already have decided that this is the subject for you. Others may be on the fence. If you've already decided that you want to be a lawyer, then law is quite obviously an excellent degree to do. You don't have to study law at university in order to become a lawyer, a solicitor or a barrister in this country. You can study another subject first and then do what is known as a conversion course after you've finished your other degree. However, if you are interested in understanding the way that rules work, getting a deeper understanding, exploring the subject in more depth, you should think very seriously about taking a law degree. Studying law at university over three years gives you a really unique opportunity to acquire a much greater and much more mature level of understanding and knowledge of uh, the law, which can be a, a real benefit to your career in the future. If you're not so sure if you want to study law, law can also be an incredibly helpful degree for a multitude of other careers. For example, politics, journalism, the charity sector, the United Nations. It can be a springboard to all these different types of degrees, that careers. Why is this? Well, because of the way that we teach law. A law degree involves not only studying what the legal rules are, but really taking an analytical approach to the world around us. It involves thinking about why certain laws exist. Can they be justified philosophically? How have they developed historically? <coughs> what social goals are they trying to uh, serve? And how should the law develop in the future? So here at Cambridge, we're not just studying what the law is. We're talking about what the law could be, what the law should be. So let me give, me, give you an example uh, from one of the subjects that I teach, which is family law. So I want you to imagine that we have an infertile couple who desperately, desperately want to have a child. They hire a woman to act as a surrogate for them and they ask their friends to donate an egg and donate a sperm to impregnate that woman. After nine months, she gives birth to a healthy baby girl. Who are the girl's parents? Is it the couple who organised the whole process, who wanted so badly to have a child? Is it the woman who carried this child in her womb for nine months and who gave birth? Is it the genetic parents the people who are these kind friends who donated the egg and the sperm. What do you think? Hands up who thinks it's the couple who organised everything. Who thinks it's the woman who gave birth? What about the genetic parents? So you can see that even in this room, people are very split on this subject. Now, there's a very simple answer in English law. Contrary to what most of you think, it's actually the woman who gives birth. That is who is a legal parent. But that doesn't really cover what we're trying to do here in Cambridge. What we're asking is, who do you think should be 
and why? What do we value here in parenthood? It also raises a lot of really interesting ethical, moral questions. So, for example, can I pay someone to carry a child on my behalf? Is that okay? We might think that if I'm infertile and it's the only way I can have a child. What if I just don't like the idea of pregnancy? Childbirth sounds pretty horrific to me and I'd really prefer not to go through that. Can I pay someone else to do it on my behalf? And what about if I go to another country and do that? So one of the biggest centres for surrogacy at the moment is India. What if I pay a woman in India at the moment the going rate is £3,000? That's more than she would earn in 10 years. Can I pay someone in India to have a child for me? So you can see that what we're looking at is not only what the law is, but all the ethical dilemmas, the way that law can develop in the future, and how we should organise our society. So, what does our course actually consist of? What would you be studying if you come to Cambridge? The law degree is typically a three-year degree, and it's what's known as a qualifying law degree, which means that you have to do seven foundational subjects. The point of the qualifying law degree is if you do want to be a solicitor, then you typically only have to do one extra year of training afterwards called the legal practice course and two years training contract as a solicitor to be qualified. If you want to be a barrister, you do an extra year uh, of the BTPC before a pupillage. On the other hand, if you study another degree at university, for example, history, English, etc., you would first have to do the conversion course before taking on the, law, uh, the uh, legal practice course, the BTPC, and uh, your practical experience. So... In our first year, I've covered, coloured the foundational subjects that you have to do to get a qualifying law degree in red. We call the first year Part 1A, and you study four subjects. These are tort, constitutional, criminal, and civil law. So civil law is actually Roman law, the study of the law used by the ancient Romans around 200 AD. And you may be thinking... Why on earth are they going to make a study this? Well, the reason is that the Romans were incredibly, incredibly clever lawyers. And the laws that they put in place inform uh, and have laid the groundwork for a lot of the legal systems uh, and legal rules that we use today. So studying it in your first year helps provide that framework for the study of the modern law that you do throughout the degree. Constitutional law, on the other hand, is incredibly topical right now and considers how the laws of the United Kingdom allocate power to different institutions, parliament, the judiciary and the government, the executive branch. In addition, this course covers topical issues such as parliamentary sovereignty, the separation of powers and the relationship between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Uh, the third subject is tort law. So this discusses civil wrongdoing. So what happens if one individual wants to sue another? For example, if when you are walking out of the lecture theatre today, you trip and break your arm. Who is responsible for your legal bills? Please don't do that. Um, and so tort looks at how uh, individuals re uh, act and can uh, their individual rights conflict against each other. The final subject you study is criminal law, which is really quite self-explanatory. It deals with things like murder, manslaughter, uh, sexual offences, and also offences against the person. We also look at reasons why you might have a defence to breaking the law. Self-defence, intoxication, insanity. It, and we think about reasons why we might choose or might be permitted to choose not to follow the laws as set down by our state. So alongside these four subjects, we also do a legal skills and methodology course, which will give you the essential training in uh, research skills and study skills. 
and also to help you understanding the policy and philosophical debates uh, that you'll be talking about in your other courses. At the end of the first year, you sit exams on uh, these four key subjects, and then you can leave them behind. You won't be examined on them again, and you can enjoy the beautiful British uh, summer. In your second year, when you come back, you, we add an extra subject, and you do five subjects in the second year. The compulsory foundational subjects are contract law and land law. They are so fairly self-explanatory. But then... The choice is up to you. One of the things we pride ourselves at Cambridge is our wide range of optional courses. In the second year, these range from international law, which is something that Cambridge is particularly renowned for, family law, which I teach, uh, jurisprudence, that is uh, legal philosophy, uh, criminology, even advanced Roman law, civil law too, if you enjoyed it so much in the first year. You are then, once again, uh, examined on those subjects at the end of the year. In the final year, uh, you'll be studying, once again, two compulsory subjects, equity, which is the law of trusts, and also EU law. Now, I have to admit, in the last couple of days, I've got quite a few emails from my students who have been asking me whether or not they're going to have to study EU law next year. To which I point out, we're still making you study Roman law 2,000 years later. <laughs> Come back to me in a while and we'll discuss it. So, for the time being, EU law is still one of the foundational courses that you must study to become a uh, qualified lawyer in the United Kingdom. So in your third year, you have an even wider range of subjects. And some of the uh, courses that you can take in your options, you can see here intellectual property, company law, commercial law. You also have the option, instead of one of these full papers, to take two half papers. And these cover a, a wide range of ideas, environmental and sustainable <coughs> development law, human rights law, 